Hey everyone, it's Donnie Gladfilter from thecadgeek.com. So AutoCAD 2021 is here and packed inside are lots of awesome new features. So what are those new features? How might you put them to use in your daily workflow? Is AutoCAD 2021 worth your attention and worth taking a look at? Well, we're gonna try to answer all of those questions and hopefully a bit more in today's video. But first, if you're new around here, once again, my name is Donnie Gladfelter and I run thecadgeek.com where we share AutoCAD tips, tricks, industry insights, and more. If you don't already, please consider subscribing and of course, don't forget to click that little bell so you don't miss any of the great videos that we share. All right, so let's jump straight into AutoCAD 2021. So first impressions after the user interface update that we saw last year where Autodesk darkened the overall aesthetic of AutoCAD, um, things generally look the same and I think that's a good thing. Um, now, speaking of things that haven't changed, uh, AutoCAD 2021, if we come up here to the save as real quick, you'll notice that it does still use the AutoCAD 2018 file format. So I think that's a great thing. What that means is that all currently supported versions of AutoCAD now share a common DWG file version. So we shouldn't have any issues exchanging files back and forth. So those are the things that haven't changed. What about the things that have? Well, I think one of the first things that you will encounter either intentionally or maybe unintentionally will be the changes to the trim and extend command. So at a high level, this year we see a new quick mode added to each of those. So what does that actually mean in practice? Well, let me show you here real quick. So if we come up here to the home tab under modify, we will of course find our trim command. Now you'll notice when I pick on this, unlike before, it is not asking me to select cutting edges. Now, if we rewind to previous versions of AutoCAD, you might recall that the first prompt when we launch the trim command is to select objects and then it says or in, and then in greater than less than brackets, it will show select all. So now with the new quick mode, the trim command more or less performs like pressing enter to select all. So as an example here, I haven't selected any cutting edges. And if I come in here to begin cleaning up this uh, wall join here, you'll notice that I haven't selected anything. It is just letting me go ahead and clean things up. So another change that we have here as well, in the past, if you were to click on the screen, you got a window selection, but now the default is a fence point. So I kind of like this. I found myself using the fence option uh, more than the window selection anyway. So we have that now as an option. Some other things that have changed here with the trim command, you might recall that in the past, the trim command will always either shorten or divide an entity into two, but it will never erase that entity. Well, that is no longer the truth in AutoCAD 2021. You'll notice that with the command options down here, we have a new one for erase. So in this case here, let's say I was trying to clean things up here, I might choose to actually erase this entire line segment and it will get rid of it just like that. Now, all of the same tricks that you know from the past also still work here. So if I wanted to use the extend command here as an example, I could press the shift key and do that shift key override to go ahead and trim things up and make that wall join right there nice and easy, just like so. And again, toggle into the erase mode to get rid of the stuff that I don't need from this small uh, update that we've made here. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Something else you'll notice is that even though in trim mode, it defaults to fence, in the erase mode, it defaults to a window selection. So uh, nonetheless, there we go. Let's get rid of this. And there we go. We have this room pretty well cleaned up. So that's looking pretty good to me here right now. Let's get out of the uh, trim command. Now we'll see similar things with the extend command, of course. It too, uh, if we go into extend, it no longer asks me for boundary edges. Although I should mention, we do have a command option down here to define either cutting edges or boundary edges, depending on which version of the command uh, you're using, whether it's trim or extend. 
And likewise, if you don't like any of this nonsense, that's okay too, uh, because both trim and extend have a mode option. The default, once again, is this new quick option, but you can make things work just like it did in previous releases by switching over to standard. Uh, my first impressions of this as someone who has provided training on AutoCAD uh, for many, many years, teaching new users of AutoCAD, one of the things I have found is that much of my teaching is focused on uh, helping folks understand how AutoCAD thinks, which is oftentimes counterintuitive to the way most people think. So I think this new quick mode is something that uh, will better align with the sort of common intuition of the way people think AutoCAD should work versus the way it actually works. So I personally welcome this change. Of course, I know the jury will be mixed on that. All right. So what else do we have inside of 2021? Now you might know if we came up here to the modify panel in previous versions of AutoCAD, this is where we would find the break command and the break command is still here. Now next to it, we've had this for a while and that is break at point. However, the break at point option has used the just standard break command and there was no way to access it at the command line. Uh, so that changes in 2021. The break at point option in the modify panel now has its own command, break at point. You can see it right there. And what we can do with this guy, and I really like it for doing things like this, where we are um, doing the thresholds of a uh, door opening like this. So if I wanted to clean this up, I could use break at point to break these lines like so. I do wish there was a multiple option, uh, but we can use break at point, and then I will just use match properties real quick to apply the appropriate layer to those new line segments. So that's one area that I do kind of like the break at point. Sometimes when we need to just break a continuous line like that uh, so we can change the layers, I find the break at point command can be really, really helpful. All right, so continuing on, um, you might recall last year with AutoCAD 2020, we got a new measure geom option, which was a quick option. You can probably sense a theme here. There's a lot of quick options being added to AutoCAD 20 or AutoCAD in general. So the quick option here in 2021 has been expanded. So it still works just like it did last year, where as we hover around here, it will give me uh, basic dimensions of the stuff that I hover on and around. However, um, something that always sort of puzzled me and perplexed me last year was the fact that it didn't measure any areas. That has changed. So now if I click into an area, as long as it creates a closed region, it is going to uh, add that up. Now, in this case, you might notice that it um, pulled out the room tag area there. If I needed to include that, I can press and hold the shift key as I am left clicking and calculate the full area here. So here you can notice that my area in this case is 281 and some change square feet. And I was able to very quickly calculate that uh, with this quick measure command here. So I really dig that new addition to the quick measure uh, command inside of AutoCAD 2021. All right, so let's continue on here and take a look at a few other things. So one of the big new features in 2020 was the addition of a new block palette. And as I've used AutoCAD over the last year, I have really, really dug the block palette. So let's pull that up here. And if you're not familiar with the blocks palette, uh, basically what this will do is it will show all of the blocks in your current drawing. So here we have that. Something I really like about the blocks palette over just the classic insert command is the addition of a repeat placement option here. So we don't have that in the regular insert dialog, but we do have it in the blocks palette. Uh, but all of this is just part of the 2020 tool set. Something that is new in 2021 is the addition of libraries. So if we come over here to libraries, what we can do is we can add any libraries that I would like. So in this case, here I have a folder that I have a bunch of blocks in. So here's my block library. Here are a bunch of blocks. And if I hit open, it is going to scan that entire directory and essentially give me a 
a, a tool set where I can insert these. So uh, again, these are meant for civil in this case, but if I click on them, you'll notice that I am able to insert them into my drawing just by picking them like so. What is also, I think, awesome about this is that we have the filter option up here. So in this case, if I wanted to find everything that was a valve, uh, I might type in VAL with the asterisk. So the same filters, for instance, that you can use with layers, you can use here as well to find all of the valves in this block library. So uh, this is really, really awesome. And something else that's really great about this is if this block library is saved on one of the supported cloud services, so they now include Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, and new to 2021 is Google Drive. So if it exists on any of those services, this will also sync up to the web version of AutoCAD and, or sorry, web and mobile versions of AutoCAD as well. So I think that's an awesome feature as well. All right, so let's, continue on here. Now, something I'm going to do here real quick is save over top of my original drawing right here from the edits that I've just made, like so. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this just to show something else here real quick. So let's come over here. I'm going to close out of this drawing and let's open up the just standard floor plan here. Um, so what I just did was basically make a new version of this. And this is one of the things that I think is also great. If you have saved your drawing file on one of the supported cloud services, so again, in 2021, those are now OneDrive, Box, Dropbox, and new for 2021, Google Drive. Uh, curiously, BIM 360, Autodesk's own cloud service, is still curiously missing. Um, hopefully, they will add that uh, sometime in the near future, but we'll see. Uh, nonetheless, in 2021, something that we have, if our drawing is saved on one of those cloud services, we can come here to the View tab, and we have a History panel and a Drawing History command here as well. So if we launch that, you'll notice that I have a list of all of the versions of this drawing file. And what's really great about this is if I pick on uh, the Compare option here, it's going to run the Drawing Compare uh, to that version. So we can see everything uh, that has changed between the two versions. It's as easy as that. So I can compare any of those historical versions to the current version of the drawing file with just one click. So that I think is pretty awesome here as well. Now, moving on, let's go ahead and close out of that. Um, You've probably seen since 2019 when Autodesk first introduced the sort of native drawing compare tool as a, a core part of the core product. Previously, it was, of course, in AutoCAD architecture, but not the core product. Ever since they've introduced that in 2019, the drawing compare tool, in my opinion, just keeps getting better. Now, something that they have improved in 2021 is the way the drawing compare tool works with XREFs. So let's take a look at this. So let's open up a version of this drawing that has the base file X referenced into it. So I have a, a power drawing here. And if I open this up, you'll notice that since I last modified this drawing file, one of its X refs have changed. So the floor plan in this case. So we know whenever we modify a base file, it is impacting other drawings. And when we open up those drawings, it's always been a bit of a mystery as to what may have changed between version A and now the current version of that drawing. Well, that doesn't have to be a mystery any longer because if you update a XREF, the next time you open that file, or if somebody's in this file and somebody saves the base file that's X referenced in, they will get this balloon notification in the lower right-hand corner and they can click on it and what this will do is run a drawing compare on the XREF. So here you can see here, it's showing everything that has changed in the just this base file uh, from the previous version to what is now the current version. And we can of course change all of that here. So we can do uh, a polygonal uh, rev cloud here as an example, if you choose, we can change the colors and all of the stuff that you've come to expect with drawing compare. So again, I think another great feature to reduce the, really the liability associated with XREFs, as much as they're a powerful tool, they also introduce, I think, some liabilities in the way that if I don't gather or I don't identify all of those changes between version A and version B, that can have some very significant consequences to my project. 
So there you have it. Those are, are that's a quick look at AutoCAD 2021. There's some other things under the hood as well that we'll take a look at in some future videos. But I'm curious, what do you think about AutoCAD 2021? Let me know in the comments below. And I'd love to hear your thoughts and what you think about AutoCAD 2021 and if you will be upgrading to it as well. As always, thanks for watching. I look forward to catching you in an upcoming video. Take care.